Hello and welcome to JHEF's lesson on redox titrations using iodine and thiosulfate. The first thing you've got to know about it is that we use it, oops, we use it when we want to find out information about oxidizing agents. Usually we would use oxidizing agents to find out what, to find out properties about the reducing agents. But instead of using the reverse of that, we can use iodine and thiosulfate instead. So these are the three most common uh, oxidizing agents that you would come across in your exam. If you see these three things under investigation, most likely you are, you are going to use iodine, iodine and thiosulfate. So how does it work? Number one, the oxidizing agent under question, so let's say Cu2+, we need to add excess iodide ions and then that gets that gets reduced, that gets oxidized, sorry. Yeah, it gets oxidized to iodine. Then we need to add a known concentration of, oh, and volume of sodium thiosulfate, which then reduces it back to I minus. What is the point? Because remember over here, we added an excess of it. We want to find out how much iodide ions have actually reacted with it. And then hopefully there will be a colour change uh, from a brownish colour and you usually get paler. Experimentally we would add starch to it so we can find out the end point and probably draw a titration curve on that. So let's put this into context. So this question is on page 223 in your uh, OCR book. And it reads, a piece of impure copper has this mass and was reacted with this. The copper 2 solution was neutralized and reacted with iodide ions to produce iodine. The iodine was titrated with this amount of sodium thiosulfate and this amount were required. What is the percentage copper in the sample? If it were 10 marks, what I would do first is I would construct the first equation even if it doesn't ask you but usually it may ask you and we can write that as Cu solid plus HNO3 and that would go to because remember it's Cu2 plus so it would be Cu NO3 2 so that means each NO3, if we split this up, that would be H plus and NO3 minus. So that means we'll need two of these to go over here. That means we need to balance it off and have two of these there. Plus H2 or two H pluses. So, mm, no, it's H2 because we have, we have lost electrons and those electrons have gone to the H plus ions to make H2. So therefore, next one. The copper 2 plus has now reacted with uh, iodide ions to make Cu plus plus iodine. So, first of all, we can see that the copper here, the copper 2 plus here, needs to react with, well, Let's start that sentence again. That copper 2 plus has lost an electron, okay? It does change to an oxidation state of plus 1 and not 0. If it were 0, it would... Mm, mm, it would be a bit... No, nah, it would be plus. So, it has lost one electron. And quite rightfully... So it has gained one electron. And quite rightfully, where has that electron come from? That electron has come from this to make... I2. Obviously we've only got one here and we've got two here so we need half of I2. Now seeing as this is in excess that means that part of these iodide ions would react with this Cu plus to make CuI and we only need one of them because we have a 1 plus charge here, this is 1 minus, so the oxidation state would therefore be 0. So that means we need another one, so I can write 2 there. Now the only, the only picky thing about this is that we've got half I2 here, which mm, 
uh, x, uh, hmm. so what we'd usually do is just multiply it by 2, all of it by 2, so we have two molecules of copper 2 plus reacting with four, uh, four iodide ions to make two copper iodide plus I2. Then, next, this iodine that has been produced gets reacted with the thiosulfate ions, which is S2, O3, C minus to make the iodide ions again plus S4O6. This over here, very important. Learn it. Learn it. This is this is this is the epitome of of redox titrations. You need to learn this. Obviously, if you don't like learning things off by rote, you can you can definitely. Uh, you can definitely just learn it like that. Obviously, there's a two there. You can learn it like this, or you can derive it. So, this I, this amount here has obviously been reacted with a known volume and concentration of the thiosulfate. Now, it tells us that it's 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed, so 0 0.05 moles per decimeter cubed, that's a concentration, and it is, I can't be bothered to scroll back up, so I'm using the book, which is 0 0.0237 decimeters cubed, which is the volume. And using this instinctively, I can find out what the number of moles is. And all I need to do is N equals C times V, 0 0.05 times 0 0.0237, and that would become 0 0.01185 now this is the amount of moles and as you can see the molar ratio is 1 to 2 so for every 2 moles that is reacted 1 mole of this has reacted so therefore we need to divide this by 2 to make 0 0.005925 moles so now we know the amount of iodine that has reacted over here. So obviously, all we need to do now is to times this by 2, because obviously the molar ratio here is 1 to 2, to find out the number of moles of Cu2+. And then we multiply it by 2 again, and that would obviously make 0 0.01185. It is, even though you've been thinking, wait, hold on. So we just ended up back to where we started. It's very important that you do this step because sometimes the molar ratios may change and you might be coming up with a rogue number. So it's very important that you do that of Cu2+. So now, looking at the periodic table, we can see that, where is it, copper is 63.5 and that's 63.5 grams per mole um, and that would be the molar ratio, now, that would be the MR and then to find out the mass of it, all we've got to do N equals M over MR, rearrange it N times MR equals M if you don't know how to do it, then I, I suggest that you learn it all we do, we multiply them together, and that would make 0 0.752475. I like to write things down, but I like to write everything down, basically, just to be on the safe side. So this is the amount of copper. This is the mass of copper that has reacted, well, that is in this impure copper. So we need to divide that number that we just got by this number over here, by the total, which is 0 0.9, and then multiply that by 100 to find the percentage purity of it, and the answer is 83.6%. And that is it. That is the percentage purity of the copper in this impure copper. This is 
So basically, it's worthwhile extracting this copper. And that is it for this lesson on iodine and thiosulfate.